Hi, my name is Jeff Perry and I'm the manager of the Webbench team at Texas Instruments. Today I'm going to talk to you about Webbench Power Designer Basics. Webbench Power Designer is part of a larger suite of Webbench tools, which also includes an LED designer, a sensor designer, active filter designer, PLL designer, and amplifier designer. Today though I'm going to be talking to you uh, specifically about Power Designer. The Webbench tools are really beginning to end design and prototyping tools, consisting of the first step in which you would enter your specifications for your power supply. This would include your input voltage range, your output voltage, and your current. You're then presented with a list of solutions, uh, which are prioritized according to your desires for footprint, efficiency, and bomb cost. From there, we go into step two to create the design. Here is where the bill of materials is generated and also the operating values including efficiency, duty cycle, currents, and power dissipations. In this step you can optimize the design individually for small footprint, high efficiency, or low bomb cost. In step three, analyze a design, you can run uh, spice simulations to test out the dynamic electrical behavior of your system and you can also run thermal simulations using our WebTherm software. In the last step, build it, you can get a custom prototype kit shipped overnight with the specific components you've used in your Webbench design. The Webbench Power Tool Suite really consists of three uh, major areas in a pyramid. The bottommost layer, which I'm going to discuss right now, is the Webbench Power Designer, which is targeted towards designing single power supplies. Webbench consists of a wide coverage of parts. Over the last several years, we've tried to really uh, give a wide range of solutions for our users. And so current can go all the way up to the 40 to 60 amp range using some parts in interleaved mode. The minimum V-out uh, can go all the way down to 0.6 volts using a variety of parts. Maximum V-in is up to 100 volts. And minimum V-in can go down to 1 volt. Topologies are supported include buck, boost, flyback, SEPIC, inverting buck boost, and we also have LDOs in the tool for low current applications. In addition, there's multilingual capability. So we include languages such as Japanese, Chinese, both simplified and traditional, Korean, Russian, Portuguese, and German. And you can change those by clicking on the language bar in the upper right corner of any Webbench screen. How do you get to Webbench Designer? Well, Use the entry panel on the front page of ti.com. Or you can go to the product folder if you know a specific part number that you want to use in Webbench. If you get a close-up of the launch panel here, you see that there are separate tabs there for the different Webbench environments. On the power tab, all you have to do is enter in your minimum and maximum input voltage, your output voltage, and your current. Also, the ambient temperature can be specified. Then click the Start Design button in the lower right for single output supplies. Within, within Webbench itself, there's a navigation bar at the top of each page that lets you skip between steps. Right now I'm showing you what uh, shows up on the New button if you click that. And here is an entry panel similar to what we just looked at, uh, but there's other tabs there to get into the other Webbench tools, including the Power Tools, which we're talking about, the LED tool, the LED Architect tool, the Power Architect tool, FPGA and Processor Power Architect tools, and Hot Swap. So just click on any one of those tabs to bring up the specific entry panel. The uh, next step in Webbench is the visualization step. Uh, in this uh, page here, we present the list of appropriate solutions for your requirements. On the right side there, you see a table of um, different solutions which are sorted and uh, ranked on order of priority according to your desires. And on the left side there is a charting feature that lets you visualize the uh, different solutions. And uh, this is really covered in another training uh, presentation. The next step is the actual creation and viewing of your design. This shows the main Webbench dashboard page which you can get to by hitting the uh, back button from any other page. On this page, in the upper left, we have the Webbench Optimizer knob. Turning this knob lets you simply go and choose from high efficiency, small footprint, or low bomb cost for your design. 
and it will customize the design according to the, those needs. Next to that, we have our operating values charts, which show you in chart form the behavior of your design for important parameters such as efficiency, duty cycle, and current. Below that, we have our operating values table, which show you the same information in tabular form. Next to that, we have our schematic, which is obviously an important part of any uh, power supply design. And below that, we have our bill of materials that allows you to view and change the components in the bomb. On the upper right, we have our optimization screen. That lets you uh, look very quickly at the different optimizations that are offered for, as I said before, the small footprint, high efficiency, or bomb cost, low bomb cost. And you can do that all on one page. In the lower right are utilities such as the build it feature to get a custom prototype kit or the reporting feature to generate PDF reports. To get to the simulation part of Webbench, just click on either the sine wave icon or the uh, thermometer icon in the top navigation bar to get to the electrical and thermal simulators. Let's talk a little bit about electrical simulation. Uh, to get to that, on this page at the top, we have a drop down that lets you select from different types of simulations. This includes Bode plot, line transient, load transient, startup, and steady state. These are SPICE based simulations that are run on the Webbench SPICE server farm. Just choose from the drop down and click the green Start New Simulation button to initiate a sim. When the simulation is done, the waveform will appear on the right. And you can click on the little uh, icons at the bottom to view the various different uh, nodes in the circuit. There's a waveform viewer on the right side, which allows you to click and zoom in and also use uh, markers to generate uh, numerical analysis of the waveform. In this case, we're looking at a Bode plot. And you can see the gain here is in red. And it crosses over 0 at about uh, 40 kilohertz or so, 35 kilohertz. At that point, the uh, phase is about negative 145, and so we have about uh, 35 to 40 degrees of phase margin. Clicking on the thermometer icon gets you into the thermal simulator for Webbench. You'll see on the right side there is a, uh, a graphical depiction of a PC board for this device. This is generally based on the uh, evaluation board that uh, is generated for each device. On that board, you can see the different uh, components that uh, dissipate power and contribute to the heat of this circuit. On the left side is the entry panel, uh, which allows you to change the parameters for the thermal simulation. Uh, you can change things like your input voltage and your current. Uh, that changes, obviously, the operating conditions under which the uh, power is dissipated. Top and bottom ambient temperature can be changed, along with the copper thickness or copper weight, the board orientation, and also airflow, uh, including the airflow direction and airflow velocity. At the bottom, the edge conditions of the simulation are set, and you can either check insulated to have an insulated edge, or you can set a specific edge temperature if you know there's a component outside the power supply that's generating heat. These are results of a simulation that we ran, or two simulations on a particular device that was, uh, had 14 to 22 volts in, 3.3 volts out at 6 amps. With half ounce copper, the low side FET was up to uh, 117 degrees C. Now, one of the things you'll note here is that uh, thermal simulation allows you to get components that are close together and uh, get the co-heating effects of those components. Because oftentimes in a power supply design, components are uh, very close together for uh, uh, design and noise re reasons. So when these components get together, they, they do have, tend to have a coheating effect. In this case, increasing the copper thickness to 4 ounces dropped the temperature all the way down to 68 degrees C. We also have the Build It step in Webbench, which you can access using the shopping cart icon in the navigation bar. This allows you to get a custom prototype kit of your exact Webbench design. This includes a bare board and parts, so you will need to solder the kit together but it allows you to very quickly get a prototype up and running of your Webbench design. Uh, these are based on hourly pricing and inventory updates from our major distributors. Webbench also has a very nice PDF reporting feature. Uh, in this case, you get a, a PDF report of the schematic, the bill of materials, and the operating values. And so you can save this uh, to document your power supply design.
When you're done with your design, you may want to share it with colleagues or management. And uh, you can do that by clicking on the Share Design button in the upper right. Uh, this allows you to type in the email of the destination uh, person who you'd like to receive the design. And then uh, it sends it to them, uh, along with any simulations that you ran that you wish to share with them. Uh, when they receive the design, they'll be called up in Webbench, and they can view the design and run additional simulations uh, if so desired. So today we covered uh, Webbench Power Designer Basics. Uh, Webbench is an end-to-end -end design solution, uh, providing online selection, simulation, and prototyping. It includes dynamic design optimization to allow you to optimize the design for small size, low cost, or high efficiency. The Webbench Circuit Calculator gives you a complete design, including the schematic and the bill of materials. The component selection is based on a library of over 20,000 passives with real-time pricing and inventory updates. Webbench includes electrical simulation for dynamic design behavior, thermal simulation, including component co-heating, and also builded custom prototype kits. Overall, Webbench to design tools save you time. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I encourage you to try Webbench tools yourself at www.ti.com webbench.